I'm CK. Tonight we're going to build another radio. This is a uh, FM digital radio kit, do-it-yourself, solder, new. Pick this up from eBay for, I'll, I'll put the uh, link in the description so you can see how much it costs. I don't remember off the top of my head. It looked like it had some interesting features different from other radios I've built. So looking forward to putting it together. Hope you enjoy it. Let's see what's in the bag. So that's a bunch of acrylic or plastic uh, panels that will make up the case for it. The, the main problem with these, of course, is I have to peel off all this paper, which is just picky, time-consuming. Here is the circuit board and some electronics, including a very big socket. Let's, let's take a look at these and dump some of them out. Here's the circuit board. Let's get a look at what we've got on that. Looks pretty good. All the components are labeled with their values. In fact, the capacitors aren't actually labeled with their values. They're labeled with the uh, part code. So that's uh, easier. Oh, you notice right here there's a little scoring. Uh, I think this piece of the circuit board is extra and gets snapped off. That's a potentiometer. That's probably the volume control. There's the display. The chip goes here, and there's stuff parked underneath the chip, which always kind of irritates me, but fine. If that's the way they want to be, that's the way they want to be. Uh, some LEDs and some transistors. Power supply. Looks like 5 volt. It looks actually pretty straightforward. So that's the circuit board. And also in the bag. Big old STC chip. Uh, microcontroller. The display for tuning, caps and resistors, and uh, an LM uh, 386. War. An antenna. I'll put the wire and the antenna in a separate bin. Bunch of 10K resistors. Another LM386. I think I know what that is, but I'm gonna, I think it's an amp, but I'm gonna take a look just to be sure. Uh, let me do that right now. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's a power, uh, audio power amplifier. That's what I thought it was. Power. Another big cap, and there's the volume control, the potentiometer for that. Even though it's got, ah, uh, it's got a bent pin. A little bit of a bent pin. Let me fix that. Well, I've got a chance right now, and don't forget. Here we go. It's probably also got an on-off control in it, because it's got too many pins just to be a Volume control. No, it doesn't click. Oh well, we'll figure it out. Push button, top, 
transistor, some capacitors, one square LED, or rectangular, sorry, crystal, and the crystal is clocked at Thirteen point five six. Huh. I have to look that up. Long switch that that red cap will go on. Nope, I was wrong. It's a long switch that we'll do something with, but I don't know what yet. Couple of caps and this little thing. I don't know. I don't know what this is. It's a surface mount mess of stuff. Let's see if I can see where it goes. Oh, I think it goes here. I think it goes right here. So it's a small circuit board uh, that is Labeled, it's a TEA5767. I bet it's a Phillips part. I bet that's a tuner. I bet that's a, uh, the actual tuning circuit. Let me find it. Yeah, low power FM stereo radio module. Yep. So that's the tuner for pulling in the FM signal that then gets fed into the rest of the stuff to show the uh, frequency to actually capture and uh, process the FM signal and then feed it to the amps. Uh, that's a cute little board and also interestingly this is pretty interesting as I'm looking here on eBay uh, these are $2.25 a piece uh, individually. If you buy three or four or more, they're $2.14. That's a really pretty powerful uh, component for the price. I love the way electronics are so inexpensive. So there's a number of very small surface mount caps, a couple of resistors. I think that's a very small, no, I'm not going to speculate. That's a cute little module for, again, uh, $2.25 to get all the power of an FM uh, receiver in one surface mount board will be pretty neat. Uh, and it goes, as I said, goes right here, and it doesn't have your traditional surface mount end pads because it's not it's a surface mount circuit breaker I mean circuit board not component so you can see it's got the little curved indentations that go over the solder pads that should be pretty easy to do but again that might put it out of the purview of beginner uh, unless you've got time to help a beginner go through the steps of surface mount. So what else do we have in here? A couple more caps, another transistor, and then this is the power button that the this cap will go on. I'm assuming it's power button. I mean, there's very little else it could be. We got another bag. We've got, oh, here we are. We've got a manual, a uh, QR code for a manual. I always stumble on QR code. I don't know why. And in here, we've got a uh, bag of screws and spacers. And a speaker, always interesting to see what quality speaker people throw into these kits. A 
This one seems pretty nondescript. That's a not a great voice coil. Uh, no indication of power. There's a little bit of epoxy dribbled over there from mating the magnet. Wow. Uh, well, if you look here, you'll see there's potting material. This is reclaimed. Uh, this is e-waste from somebody that they bought and threw into this kit. And I'm going to have to try and scrape that potting material or epoxy off the terminals so I can solder my leads on there. Yeah, this is a reclaimed part. If you've ever wondered what happens to those computers and mobile phones and other electronics that you put in recycling or hand off to uh, an e-waste person. Well, this is what happens to them. They get stripped out of whatever product they're currently in, put in big bins, and various folks will scan through the bins, say, ah, I could use 50 speakers, and they throw them in kits. So uh, if you expect that you're getting new parts in any electronic kit you get from eBay, you're I'd say you've got a 70% chance that you're getting reclaimed parts, 30% new, depends, but uh, a lot of reclaimed parts, which in and of itself is not bad. I mean, a resistor or a speaker like this can last a long time, particularly if it hasn't been used a lot, so I w it's not something to worry about, it's just something to be aware of. And when you run across some damaged parts or capacitors that have funny shrink wrapping on them, uh, just say, ah, this is probably an e-waste reclaimed part. I'll grab my iPad and we'll zap this QR code. Again, the way it's laid out, uh, I don't think you need an instruction or build guide for this because it's pretty straightforward. And again, all the components are described on the board itself, so it's not a big deal. Introduction. It is an 87 to 108 megahertz wireless FM radio receiver, the built-in four-digit red tube display. Uh, it's got its features, and all the features come from that Philips uh, radio chip. Uh, output impedance is 8 ohms, output power is 5 watts. Okay. Uh, I'm looking for anything interesting. It does have a good parts list, which is good. Schematic. Happy about that. Installation tips. Please be patient until the installation is complete. Yes. Uh, this package is a do-it-yourself kit. It needs finish install by user. Yes. Installation steps, parentheses. Please be patient. In other words, don't come whining to us that you have to do some work. And here we go. Another uh, kit maker who I now like because they've got pictures of each step of each component being installed. You can't go wrong if you do that. We'll start with the resistors, of course. Okay, at this point, I'm going to go back live with some commentary because 
the instructions guide us to put the FM radio component on now, the little surface mount component. So I want to go through that live. And let me get some my thinnest solder for this. Uh, for surface mount, hand surface mount, I use this MG Chemicals solder. It's 0 0.025 diameter. However, even though it's so very thin, it is uh, rosin cord. I don't know how they do it. It's magic, but uh, it's my favorite solder for doing surface mount stuff because it flows so quickly. Now, usually, I like to splash a whole bunch of whole bunch of uh, flux around on the surface mount area to prevent bridging. And I think I still will, but I think the design of a surface mount circuit board with these little semicircle indents uh, means that it's much less likely to bleed across. However, it's also a little more difficult to seat the first leg of the component because typically you put a little solder on the pad, move the component over, put the leg of the component over it, and then uh, heat it, pull the iron off, and you're pretty much good to go. You've set one pin. This is a little more, I'm going to try the same thing, the same technique, and we'll see if that works. But since there isn't a metal leg to sink down into the solder, I'm not sure how effective it'll be. But no reason not to try. I'm going to actually place this on my solder solder block from Austin Ribbon Mics so it doesn't scoot across the polyurethane wood of my work surface. So we'll put a glob of solder there. Move the chip into place. I may do this by hand without using tweezers. Let's see how this goes. Now we'll just heat that little glob of solder up, settle in, and it seems to have worked okay. I'm a, I'm twisted a little bit, so I'm going to straighten it out. And I'm a little bit too far that way, so I'm going to come back a little bit. And that twisted me again. Just take it slow and steady. And stop and take a look and then back it out. Well, that looks pretty good. Now, I, again, I was just about to say I'm going to do it without flux, but then I realized what's the point? If I've got flux, May as well glob it on there. You don't get extra points for not using flux. I'll set it. I think I'll set it just like that. And that's the wrong solder. It's too thick. That's the right solder.
That seems to have gone together correctly. I'm going to pick it up and take a real close look. Well, I'm going to assume it's in them correctly and when we power it up, we'll see whether I was right or not. Because again, uh, because it's these little semicircles, you can't see if the solder has actually adhered uh, to the metal inside. With a standard surface mount part, you can see that the leg or the end has actually sunk into the solder. Here you're, you can't really see that. Uh, I could probably, no, I was about to say I could do a continuity check, but there aren't good leads to follow for that. I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay, I think that is soldered correctly. So, as you can see, uh, this is not a particularly difficult piece of surface mount soldering to do. As surface mount goes, that's pretty, that was pretty straightforward. So, I would not necessarily have any trepidation of doing this kit, if you, even if you don't have a lot or maybe any experience with surface mount, this is a good one to start with because there's just one component and it's uh, pretty straightforward to put on. One thing you will definitely need is you need a soldering tip that's very small and the one I use is a 30 degree bend and it just you're not getting heat all over the place you're getting it right on the small surface mount pads and I find it very helpful to use the bent too so I'm not going directly down at it I can be at a little bit of an angle and be able to see more clearly what I'm doing so that's the surface mount part the rest uh, we're going to be putting the capacitors, uh, transistors, and uh, the rest of the components on the board, and I will not have commentary during that, so we'll go back to music. Okay, I did want to stop momentarily and talk about uh, one thing and point out one thing. Uh, the circuit board, well first, as you can see when I put the IC socket in for the microcontroller, the two ceramic and one electrolytic cap uh, stick out. So whenever you're going to be putting something under a chip you have to put the socket in place just temporarily or permanently and before you solder your components make sure they're laying down enough so they won't interfere with uh, the chip when the chip gets added to the board so that means, again, you can't put the electrolytic straight up and to bend it over you have to leave a little slack, for lack of a better term, in uh, the lead so it'll lay flat. One other interesting thing to me is the board is marked uh, for a 12 megahertz chip uh, crystal and this is a 13.56 uh, megahertz 
Uh, I don't know why they substituted. 12 megahertz chips are ubiquitous. They're all over the place. They're not hard to find. Uh, maybe there's something about this clock, ch I mean the radio chip that I didn't see so far. Uh, also, the kit comes with one extra capacitor, uh, 104 capacitor, one extra 22P, and one extra transistor. Don't really know why, but there are extras. Okay, back to soldering these components in place. And we're back live now, or with commentary, and everything went together pretty well, except you might have seen me, I kind of, I'm going to cut some of it out, but this antenna is a real pain. Uh, it's chromed, so you can't simply solder it on. They don't include uh, hardware for it. The uh, screws they include go through the PCB, but are too small for the uh, antenna itself, the hole drilled in the antenna itself. So I tried uh, a watch screw that didn't ha hold enough and then finally took the antenna over to the drill press and drilled the hole out. But you shouldn't have to do that. That's uh, You may have trouble getting that antenna on. Uh, other than that, the only thing we have to do is put the speaker wires in and then mount it in the case. And along the way, we have in the extra bin, we've got one, two capacitors, one transistor, and actually an extra uh, LM power amp, uh, audio amp, which is kind of funny. It's kind of a funny thing to put an extra one in the package for. Now it's time to put the front panel on it. Now before you do anything, you want to peel the protective coating off the LCD display. I have a number of electronic things around the house that I forgot and left the protective film on. It doesn't hurt anything, just could, makes you feel kind of dumb when you get it all together and you say, oh, I have to take it all apart to get the film off. I'm not gonna do that. So we put the screw in there with a nut to give it a little spacing. Got a nice uh, soft flange on it, which is good. That's a positive, even though it is, again, it's kind of a junky speaker. I'm going to try and get this whole solder off. There we go. 
Oops. That's what happens in your solder sucker after a while. You get a cylinder of solder that comes out periodically. Oops, didn't fire it off at the right spot. There we go. Now we can thread the wire through there much more easily. And I'm going to go ahead and solder the speaker on now. And then we can start assembling the sides. Okay. And that will go like so, and I'll tuck the wire in like so. And now we'll get the side panels. Because that's the top. That's the bottom. This is one side and it's got the cutout for the volume potentiometer. That's really dumb. The wire gets really pinched in there. Now this is one of those areas that you want to help out with when you're uh, assembling these. Sorry about that, my top camera wasn't running uh, for a little while there, I'm not sure why. But uh, we've got two sides. We've got the front, back, and one side done, so now we just have to get The rest, this time I'll use tweezers. Yep. Of course that doesn't matter when the speaker is magnet is gonna grab the screw. I'm glad it's not a really powerful Alenco magnet or something else I wouldn't be able to do this at all okay now we're ready to power it up let me get my multi-voltage power supply from Belker and set it to 5 volts I'm going to take one of these apart uh, sometime so you can see the uh, resistor network inside and so on. I'm going to turn the light off. Make sure the power button is out. Now power it up. We've got 87.9. Okay, so it works as a little blue power LED. You might have noticed that the uh, tuning display turns off after a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds, which is interesting, but it works. Okay, so this is an okay kit. In fact, I might recommend it for some basic or for your first time doing surface mount because that, again, was a pretty easy surface mount approach. 
Uh, the problems are this case design is not really good. Uh, you want to put the speaker wires on the other side of the circuit board, not where it's described in the instructions because there's no room on the side to pass them through. Uh, be careful of the components under the microprocessor chip. And I think that's about it, besides anything else I've said along the way. So that's another FM radio. Thanks for watching.